There is a trauma-informed movement, from what I understand, that's still somewhat new. Um, I think, from what I understand, um, trauma-informed care was first articulated in 2001. So okay. about 23 mm-hmm. years past that. So I'm curious, do you see it as a necessary corrective? Or what does this movement, being a mainstream movement, have to offer to mm-hmm. Christians? And are there any cautions that you would offer with mm-hmm. it? Sure. I did some reflecting on this. <laughs> um, the principles in the mainstream movement are, I think they're important for Christians in that they, in al- it's almost a mirror in some ways for who we are. I think for who Christ wants us to be ideally. Maybe the difference is that in the mainstream movement, they would see it as sort of something they can learn and do all by themselves. And as Christians, we think about how it is Christ and his spirit in us that enables us to do this kind of care. But it's still good, I think, for us to hear what the trauma-informed movement is saying and kind of say, well, how are we doing with that then? Is this it aligns with our teachings and are we actually doing it in our churches? So here's what, here's what they're calling for. Um, Helping people to feel physically and psychologically safe. So is that happening in our churches? When people come to us, are we helping them to know that here they are going to receive respect and care and we're going to view them the way Christ would view them? To me, that's the essence of helping people feel psychologically safe. Another part of what they are looking at in the model is, are we making decisions with the goal of transparency and building trust? So less of a, much less of a top-down approach where a patient comes in or an employee comes in and then somebody up above them makes all these decisions about what they're needing. It's more of, we're going to have conversations that build an element of trust. Um, are we doing that? in our churches. Another thing they stress is integrating those with trauma experience into the community in ways that offer what they've learned to support other people. And so are are we willing to, like I think sometimes what happens in our communities, and I would hear this in people's stories so easily in our churches, there's the group that's trusted and the group that's not. And I don't know. I think sometimes the people who are not trusted are the ones who have some, maybe some traumatic things that make it difficult for them to communicate well. But could we actually be giving more and more opportunities for them to give in our communities? Um, Power differences are leveled to support shared decision-making wherever possible. I think we try to do that in our communities. Um, We're not always doing it well. Um, all people are validated in ways that increase their hope for healing. So that's that's saying we're aware that we could respond to someone with trauma in ways that actually drive them further into the shame rather than facilitating their healing. And another thing that this movement talks about is that caregivers are aware of their biases and they lay them down. And I think that's a great definition for humility, even for Christians in the church. We're aware of where we tend to be really strong at the at the cost of something else. And we're willing to set that to the side while we're while we're listening to what this other person is really experiencing and really asking for. Um, You asked about a caution. I I do think one caution is that. We have to be careful that we don't emphasize trauma so much that we end up getting overwhelmed by the, by it, like just the fact that it exists. So when people first start studying trauma, it can be pretty overwhelming, actually. And so we might lose hope in relation to it. Or we might think that, oh, now I understand how the brain works, so now I can heal it all. (laughs) And it's not that either. So be careful of how of the pendulum swing, I guess, in our responses. Um, If we're to do well in acknowledging it, we must also remember that it's Christ's presence that gives strength to heal, and he opens up the way. And then we bear with humility the scars that remain, because that is something true about trauma too. Though there 
it is common for people who have experienced significant traumas. They will experience great healing, but there will still often be scars. There will still be places where they're aware that the memories are coming into play in the present. And so can we be loving even when that's at play? So we must learn how to love deep and long in relationships that are not always easy. We need to be committed to minister out of the love of Jesus Christ. And out of His great love, we support trauma survivors in doing the next thing that they're able to. We don't just hand them a list and say, okay, you got to be able to do all this, 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 and this, this, because we're not in charge of their healing process anyway. We really do believe that Jesus is going to be the one who guides them. So we come alongside and support the next thing that they are feeling ready to do. And we need to be hope carriers for these individuals because they endure so many tough things every day. People who are experiencing PTSD, they exercise courage every single day in order to live their life well. So the trauma-informed healthcare movement recognizes that respect and humility in relationships is as healing for trauma as medications. That's the other thing about this movement is that they're not oversimplifying it anymore, like where it used to be like, oh, you're having panic attacks, take this pill. <laughs> the trauma-informed movement is actually saying, actually, there's a relational aspect that is so needed for people who have experienced trauma. And so I wonder if the corollary for that in our church setting, maybe the lesson for us is that respect and humility in our relationships is more healing for trauma than prescribing a Bible verse or thinking that because I prayed for you, you should be better now. Because we do our own kinds of religious prescribing sometimes. Um, and I think, it would, I think it would be good for us to know that walking alongside relationally with respect and humility will go a long way for the healing process and trauma 